Hi, this is me, it's Marie, the soldier of Mary. Today, I want to look at three beautiful changes that could be made to the Hail Mary. I know this probably sounds kind of weird because, you know, the Hail Mary, we say it every day, and in our minds, we kind of think, oh, it's always been the same. But the matter of fact is that the Hail Mary, as we generally say it, wasn't fixed until the reign of Pope Pius V in the 16th century. But anyway, there are three beautiful suggestions that you might wish to take up to add to the Hail Mary. And I'm not just bringing this from my authority. <laughs> what would that be? I'm taking it from some writings from some of the saints and visionaries. So first of all, from the writings of Saint Jacinto Marto. Writings, I mean, from the sayings, really. We know that Saint Jacinto Marto, she used to add something to the Hail Mary. And it's something that, that I've always thought is pretty beautiful. And maybe we should all add it in all languages. And that is, her dad relates, Tio Marto, he relates in an interview that he gives to William Thomas Walsh for his book, Our Lady of Fatima, a great book, on the apparitions, he explains how Jacinta, even from her earliest days actually, even before she saw the apparitions of Our Lady, she would say, Hail Mary, full of graces, the Lord is with you or with thee. Hail Mary, full of graces, the Lord is with thee. And then later on, after the apparitions had occurred, someone asked her why why is it that you say it this way and she said whenever i see all our lady or whenever i imagine our lady i always see her hands filled with graces for us and and actually i think this would be a beautiful addition to the hail mary to say hail mary full of graces rather than hail mary hail mary full of grace and it actually tells us something doctrinal hail mary full of grace is telling us, Mary, you are immaculately conceived. You are free from sin the first moment of your conception. You're filled with sanctifying grace from the first moment of your conception. But saying Hail Mary full of graces is emphasizing, moreover, that Our Lady is the mediatrix of all graces. Hail Mary full of graces. Our Lady has these graces to give to us. And to me, it reminds me of the image on the Miraculous Medal, right? On the Miraculous Medal, Our Lady has her hands, her arms spread out, and there are rays coming from her fingers. And I think there's a couple of fingers where there are no rays emerging. And St. Catherine Labore was told, those are the graces that are not being asked for. The graces that are there but are not being asked for. So changing the petition to Hail Mary full of graces, it will really bring to everyone's mind that Our Lady has not just been immaculately conceived, but that she has been instituted as the one who dispenses graces to all humanity. Second, and maybe you knew this one was coming, at Garabandau, the girls from about, I think it is from the beginning of August. It's after the Hail Mary has been recorded on audio tape. So that's why this change isn't in the Hail Mary that we hear on the audio tape. You know, the one that you can see on my channel on another recording. But in the beginning of August then, the children in ecstasy begin to pray the Hail Mary with the following bit added. They say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, and our mother. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, mother of God and our mother. That's what they add. And our mother. And you know, there's again, there's something really beautiful in that one. It really ties in with the spirituality at Garabandal of Our Lady as the mother of these children coming to visit them, as they said, like a mother that they hadn't seen for some time, someone that they had such tender feelings towards and, and had such tender feelings towards them. So they naturally, they naturally, instantaneously, spontaneously, together, cry out, Holy Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us. And you know, in the days of the apparitions, they used this and they would frequently use this when the public rosaries were said. And so a lot of people got used to adding that into the rosary. After Garabandal, 
other apparitions I have noticed have also added this in. There was another minor apparition in Spain uh, uh, later on in the 20th century. In the 80s, I think, a man, a young man then, who was, who was known as José Luis Manzano, and his apparitions haven't been approved by the church. And I don't know if he's still giving messages nowadays, but back in the 80s, I think, in the 90s, he was giving messages. And one of the things I noticed characterizes his recitation of the Hail Mary is the inclusion of this little phrase also. And I'm sure out there, there are more and more individuals feeling in inspired to include and our mother in the Hail Mary. Theologically, again, this emphasizes Our Lady's personal motherhood over us. We don't have that currently in the Hail Mary. It says Mother of God, emphasizing Our Lady's motherhood of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. But maybe through the Marian apparitions, and especially the apparitions at Garabandau, we have really discovered at an even deeper level the personal motherhood of Mary for each one of us. I know at Garabandal, on Our Lady's last message to Conchita, this was very much emphasized. Like, here's, here's going to be a bit now that I'm going to read to you from Conchita's diary. This is, it's strange how this is not known as the third message of Garabandal, even though we've got a whole big chunk of Our Lady speaking, and and we are told exactly what our, this is another strange thing about Garabandal, but anyway, here we go. Our Lady says to Conchita, Conchita, I have not come only for you, but I have come for all my children, with a desire to bring them closer to our hearts. Later on, she adds, Conchita, tell me, tell me things about my children. I have all of them under my mantle. So, so it's, this is, and then finally, just to, to conclude it, she says, this will be the last time you'll see me here, but I will always be with all my children. So there at Garabandau, very much emphasized is Our Lady as our mother. And that's something that we can all do well to reflect upon and have at the forefront of our minds each day that we have this personal mother who knows us, who's thinking about us, who's giving us graces, who cares about us more than anyone else, any other human person. Our Lady cares more about us. Of course, our Lord, a divine person, uh, knows us even better than the Blessed Virgin, as do all three members of the Most Holy Trinity, all three persons of the Holy Trinity. But in terms of created persons, there's no one who loves us as much as our mother Mary, our mother in heaven. And so adding this to the Hail Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God and our mother, maybe it'll be a good thing. Our Lady was pleased when the children spontaneously added this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. She was pleased, but she did say to them that they shouldn't use this expression until it is approved by the church. And actually in the Spanish, it's clear that this is a kind of hypothetical until it might be approved by the church. That's the sense that when I when I read the Spanish of, of Our Lady's instruction to the children. So Our Lady isn't prophesying to the children that one day the church will add this section to the Hail Mary. But she's saying, and um, because the children don't stop using the formula, they still use the formula and they like using the formula, so they don't stop. So it's clear that Our Lady isn't telling them, isn't saying never use this formula, but she's saying don't use it liturgically. I don't want priests using this liturgically. I don't want you to promote this as part of the official rosary until it's approved by the church. But Our Lady liked it. It seemed good to her. That's the kind of sense of the Spanish. It seemed It seemed good to her. It appeared good to her. And so she was happy with the idea of it being included, but she clearly, Our Lady clearly acknowledges that this is something that the church has to decide. And maybe the church, maybe the church will, maybe the church won't add it. Our Lady wasn't prophesying either way whether this is going to be added to the Hail Mary. But it seemed to her a good thing. And to me also, it seems a good thing. Holy Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, final addition to the Hail Mary. Now here, 
I was in two minds as to what to include as the final petition. It's certainly true that there is another visionary who's fairly well known who suggested another addition to the Hail Mary. And I think I should probably say what she said, even though I don't like it. And I don't think I'll be adding this to the Hail Mary anytime soon. But there is a visionary called Elizabeth Kindleman, who I think is was Hungarian. And her writings have now been given an imprimatur by the Cardinal of Hungary, Cardinal Erdo, I think his name is. So he's a, he said her writings are free from error. And she was the founder of the Flame of Love movement. It's not actually a movement I'd heard of until I was doing research to find out had anyone else thought of something that needed to be added to the Hail Mary because I didn't want to be embarrassed and discover that actually there's a whole group of people adding something in the Hail Mary that, that I didn't know of when I made this video. So I found out that Elizabeth Kindleman received from Our Lady and Our Lord encouragement to add an extra petition to the Hail Mary. And maybe it doesn't make sense to me because I don't know enough about the flame of love movement that she founded. But anyway, in 1962, Our Lady is said to have told Elizabeth, when you say the prayer that honors me, the Hail Mary, include this petition in the following manner. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, so the bit Our Lady's adding is, Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. Maybe you need to say it quite a lot to get used to adding that bit in there. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. Certainly, I mean, you can be really cynical here and say Elizabeth Kindleman is trying to promote her devotion to the flame of love movement by inserting it in the Hail Mary so that all her adherents begin to say this little bit in the Hail Mary so more and more people are like oh what's that what's that bit she's added in the Hail Mary and they get to know about this devotion etc etc but anyway the bishop apparently asked Elizabeth about this addition and our lord himself replied and said in 1982, doubling down and saying, you know, it's a really good bit to add to the prayer. I'm paraphrasing our divine Lord there. He said that, yes, it's really important to add this because by this, humanity is going to be converted. Our Lady added, though, I do not wish, want to change the prayer by which you honor me by this petition. I want rather to shake humanity. This is not a, hu a new prayer formula. It must be a constant supplication. So it's kind of a bit confusing what Our Lady's saying there. I think she's trying to say, look, I don't want to change the Hail Mary. I just want to shake everyone up a bit. So it's, I think she's saying it's still going to be the Hail Mary, even if you add this little bit to it. So, so there we go. So that's the last of the, the last of the extra parts added to the Hail Mary. Probably like me, perhaps like me, this final one is, is a bit of a letdown when you think of the, the beautiful suggestion of Saint Jacinta and of the children of Garabandal. Maybe if I was going to suggest one addition to the Hail Mary, it might be for everyone to say Ave Maria as the first two words of the Hail Mary. In any language, in whatever language you're saying the Hail Mary, always begin with Ave Maria, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. I think that'd be really nice. I think because hail we don't what does, we don't use the word hell it's not part of our normal vocabulary and in other languages that greeting word is not particularly impressive sometimes it's kind of like hello mary or greetings mary in some languages so and in the japanese the japanese were so unsure about how to pronounce how to translate that the, the the ave in ave maria in japanese they actually just begin ave maria and in Italian and in it and in Portuguese, they just begin Ave Maria. And I think a few other languages also, maybe you know more about that. So that would be my little suggestion. Maybe we should all say Ave Maria as the first line of the Hail Mary. 
What do you think about these pious additions to the Hail Mary? Of course, no one is saying that the Hail Mary is somehow inadequate at the moment. It's a beautiful prayer. It's a powerful prayer. It's my favorite prayer. And so I don't want to sound as if I'm saying that the Hail Mary needs improvement. But the Hail Mary has changed and has developed over the last thousand years. And it could be that the Holy Spirit is inspiring a few tweaks in the Hail Mary. Maybe one of these that you have heard in my program today. Or maybe you think the Holy Spirit is guiding the Hail Mary to be developed in another way. Let me know in the comments below. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.